Welcome to Greenbone's information and tutorial video series. I'm Joseph from the Greenbone community, and in this video, we will learn about the filtering capabilities built into Greenbone Community Edition and how Greenbone filters can be used in vulnerability management operations. In this video, we will learn the basic options for configuring filters in Greenbone and what each of the filter action buttons do. We'll also learn how to create and store custom filters and where saved filters are located in the Greenbone web interface, how to use filters when configuring alerts, and how to use advanced filter syntax. We'll also learn how to set default filters for each page in Greenbone. For this video, we're accessing Greenbone remotely from the Firefox browser on Mac OS. Before we start, I'll mention that you can access the user manual for the Greenbone Community Edition from the Help User Manual item at the top menu bar, and you can also find help for specific topics by clicking the small question mark icons found in many places in the Greenbone Community Edition. Okay, on to filters. A filter action menu is on almost every page in Greenbone and located in the top right hand corner. The most basic filter actions are the text input box where you can manually enter a filter term and the edit filter icon which opens a graphical interface for configuring filters. The other quick actions in the filter menu are update filter which will apply the current contents of the filter input remove filter, which will delete the currently applied filter and return to the empty baseline filter, reset to default, which will reapply the page's default filter, a direct link to the Greenbone manual's filter section, and the filter dropdown select, which can be used to apply a saved filter. It's worth a quick mention that table data can be sorted using each table header row. Let's jump into a completed scan report and quickly learn the basics of filtering report items. From our tasks page, let's select a completed scan report. To do the most basic pattern search, we can simply provide text input. For example, we can filter the results for only items with the keyword Apache. Once we apply the filter, you'll see that the keyword is prepended with a tilde character to indicate a pattern search that applies anywhere within each item's data. Filter syntax also supports operators such as AND, OR, and NOT. For example, we can search for all results with Apache or PHP. Or we can search for items that don't contain a keyword using NOT, such as NOT Apache. Or chain filters together such as NOT Apache and NOT SSH. Let's take a quick moment here to cover the ins and outs of Greenbone filter syntax. As we mentioned before, Filter term syntax supports conditional operators such as AND, OR, and NOT. Conditions are processed from left to right, but they cannot be grouped together. The following comparison operators are supported. Equal sign is used for an exact value match to a field. The tilde character is used for a pattern match for a string similar to how like would be used in SQL syntax. Greater than and less than are supported, and the regular expression comparison operator allows a regex pattern to be used. If no field is provided, all fields within the scope will be considered. If a field is provided, but no value, items with empty value will be returned. The following operators are not supported, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or parenthesis for grouping logical operators. Dates can be formatted using absolute or relative times. For example, supported absolute time formats include the date format and the date and time in ISO 8601 format. Greenbone filters also support the standard list of relative time operators, such as second, minute, hour, day, week, month, and year. Here are some power filter examples. This filter will show any objects that were modified between April 3rd, 2023 and April 5th, 2023. This filter will show any object that was created within the past seven days. This filter will show any objects that have TCP as a port list value. There are also display formatting keywords such as number of rows and sort by columns. This filter will show the first 20 objects sorted by the column named status. 
Links are provided in the video description for documentation about filter fields and more examples of power filters. Next, let's look at the graphical interface to see how to quickly create and store some useful report filters. Click on the Edit Filter icon in the Filter menu to open the filter dialog. Note that you can enter text-based filter syntax into the input box here, which is helpful if you want to build and save complex filters. The default scan filter includes all severity classes and vulnerabilities with a quality of determination of 70% and higher. Let's create and save a filter that shows only log items. Unselect all severity classes and select a log class. Logs contain useful information for ensuring that a scan has run correctly. Also, if you're conducting a discovery scan, the report will only include log items, so the report will look empty if you don't enable log items. To save the filter, check Store Filter As at the bottom and give the filter a name. In this case, I'll simply call this filter Log Only. Then we can apply and save the filter. Notice our report results have changed to only show logs. You can also see the applied filter term in the lower left corner of the page, which is helpful for learning the Greenbone filter syntax. Next, let's create a filter to show only high severity vulnerabilities and lower the quality of determination. This might be helpful if you're securing a critical asset and you want to carefully evaluate all potentially severe vulnerabilities, even those with a low QOD. Let's save this filter with the name High Severity QOD Greater Than 30. Saved filters can be easily applied from the drop down filter menu in the top right hand corner. Also note that if you export a scan report while a filter is set, the report will be generated according to the active filter. Some of the other options available from the scan task filter interface include restricting the report to only hosts that have vulnerabilities, using a more granular severity threshold rather than the severity classes, results with specific types of solution, filtering to only specific vulnerabilities which can accept the vulnerability test ID or keywords, or restricting the report to a specific IP address, port, or protocol. To view all saved filters, go to Configuration Filters in the top menu bar. Here we can see the two filters that we just created, along with the filter syntax term, and we can delete them, adjust them, clone them, or export them using the icons at the far right of the filter item. Next, let's create a useful filter for viewing our scan tasks. We can open the filter interface and order the tasks to be displayed according to the highest severity by selecting the Sort By drop-down menu and choosing Severity and select Descending as the Sort By option. Let's also restrict the list to tasks with the keyword Finance Department in the comments. If you're familiar with how tags work in Greenbone and you have tags applied, you could use tags instead of comments to filter items for the Finance Department. Now we can see all the tasks for scanning Finance Department assets sorted by the vulnerability severity. In this case, it shows there's clearly some critical remediation work to be done within the Finance Department assets. In some contexts, the filter interface is quite limited compared to what can be done with keyword-based filter syntax. A filter keyword guide is available on the Greenbone website, and a link to that guide has been included in the video description. However, it's important to note that filters can be applied to every table by column name and even the section titles within each scan result, making the filter term syntax a very powerful tool for working with Greenbone. Let's look at a couple of additional use cases when writing a filter term is helpful for cybersecurity operations. Go to SecInfo NVTs in the top menu bar. If we quickly look at the available filter GUI, we see it's fairly limited, so let's explore some other filter options. Let's look for vulnerability tests that impact an Ubuntu Apache Tomcat server. We'll start with a search that will include any references that include the term Apache or Tomcat. If we just enter the terms Apache and Tomcat, that produces a fairly large number of items. To search for a multi-word string, we'll need to explicitly declare the pattern with the tilde and double quotes. That ensures our search will include the exact string Apache Tomcat. We can see that the vulnerability test families in the NVTs by family chart in the top right and click on those families to adjust the filter. Let's limit our search to only the web server family. We can use the same approach and the severity chart to filter items with a critical severity of CVSS 7 and above. 
Let's filter only items created since the start of 2022. To do that, we need to manually add greater than January 1st, 2022 to the filter input. We can see the vulnerability search has been reduced from over 400 items down to only six, representing the most critical recent vulnerabilities that impact Apache Tomcat servers. Let's create another filter term to find severe Windows vulnerabilities. We can search for all vulnerabilities within the family that's exactly equal to Windows. Here, family refers to the vulnerability tests assigned family classification. We can widen the scope of this filter to include all vulnerability families that have the term Windows by changing the equal sign to a tilde. Now we can see that our search includes an additional family of vulnerability tests named Windows Microsoft Bulletins by the family graph at the top. Let's cover a few additional tips and tricks related to Greenbones filters before we wrap up. Firstly, filters can be used to configure alert conditions. Alerts are useful for creating automatic notifications. To use an existing scan result filter as an alert condition, either create a new alert or edit an existing alert. Then you can set the alert condition for when a filter matches at least a certain number of scan results or when a filter matches at least a certain number of delta scan results. The next thing you should know is that each page in Greenbone has a default filter that's automatically applied when it's loaded or when the reset to default filter icon is clicked. The default filters for each page in Greenbone can be set from the user settings page. Go to the user icon in the far top right hand corner and select my settings. On the user's settings page, click the edit settings icon in the top left hand corner to open the user's settings dialog. Scroll down to the filter settings section and you can see and change all the user's default filters. Let's use the high severity filter we created earlier as the default results filter. Now when we load a scan report, the results will automatically have the new default filter applied. Finally, filters can be used with many Python GVM functions. Python GVM is a Python library that interacts with the Greenbone Management Protocol, or GMP, and can be used to automate Greenbone tasks and extend functionality beyond what is possible via the web interface. A link to the Python GVM documentation is included in the show notes, or it can be found with a quick internet search for Python GVM. As an example, the getCVEs and getNVTs functions accept a filter keyword argument, which can be used to supply a filter programmatically to search for CVE and NVT results and create custom scan configurations to automate tasks, reporting, or interact with other key components of Greenbone. So let's do a quick recap of how Greenbone's filters can be used to more easily manage your vulnerability management operations. Filters are available on almost all pages of the Greenbone Community Edition web application and are a helpful tool for managing complex information. Filters can be stored and set as page defaults or used to build customized reports and alerts. Filters can be configured from the graphical interface using the edit filter icon in the filter menu and more complex filter terms can be entered into the filter text input or both the graphical interface and the filter text can be used together. Filter syntax supports comparison operators, including the equal sign for exact matches, tilde for wildcard pattern matching, as well as greater than and less than for numerical and date fields and regular expressions are also supported. Conditional filters can be created using using AND, OR, and NOT. And there are other ways to quickly enable filters such as sortable table headers and charts and graphs in the user interface. Filters can also be used programmatically with GMP and Python GVM. Subscribe to the Greenbone video channel and join us on the Fediverse to learn more about the Greenbone Community Edition's features and how they support cybersecurity operations and enterprise vulnerability management programs.